On a bleak and inhospitable Arctic shoreline, hardy adventurers search for giants. Their prey is the same creature stalked by hunters thousands of years ago. For this modern expedition, the catch is embedded in ice. But every summer, the Arctic thaw reveals its ancient secrets. Like a fish, you can find it normally. You can't find anything in the water. Now we're waiting for the storm. Maybe something will come out. This place seems barren but it's abundant in one precious resource, a gift from prehistoric times. Now it's worth a fortune to these men. Like all treasure, everybody wants it, and there's a fight over who should get it. The Siberian tundra has become the battleground in this conflict between business, science and indigenous people. They are now all hunters in the quest for this unique prize. Once the plains of Siberia teemed with millions of woolly mammoths. They thrived in the cold conditions of the last ice age. But 10,000 years ago, they began to die out Scientists still aren't sure whether to blame climate change or hunting. The mammoths may be extinct, but their tusks are well preserved in this Arctic deep freeze. I'm on a journey across northern Siberia. In the vast expanse of tundra below lie the remains of an estimated 150 million mammoths. Georgi Gavriliev has built a business out of finding them and selling their valuable tusks. He's taking me to the ivory front line. The shore of the Arctic Ocean is a mammoth treasure trove. The ivory hunter's camp seems to be in the middle of nowhere. They live in a tent all summer while they search for ivory on the shore and in creek beds. It's a hard life, but for these tough Siberian men, it's a pleasant summer break. It's a holiday with profit in mind, but this season hasn't been very lucrative so far. The hunters have found mostly mammoth bones and teeth, ancient remains of no real value to them. Ivory is the money earner. Their one lucky break was finding a tusk jutting out of the muddy beach just downstream. It's cracked and broken. This is poor quality ivory. My guide, Yogi Gavriliev, is a potential buyer. He checks out the lone tusk and decides to make a bid. The deal is done. Georgi Gavriliev bought the task for $700. 
his asking price on the international market will be about 5000 The nearest patch of civilization for the ivory hunters is the former Soviet outpost of Chokhedakh. Since the breakup of the Soviet Union, this town has been almost abandoned by the authorities. The remaining 2,000 residents live off the land, hunting and fishing. It's a harsh existence. In winter, the temperature falls to 50 degrees below zero. But underground, there's ancient treasure here too. Georgi Gavriliev has tracked it down in a frozen basement. The tusk has been stored well in these sub-zero temperatures. It's a good find, an attractive piece for an overseas collector. Outside, Georgi takes a closer look to judge its quality. Georgi Gavriliev's business success depends on his knowledge of these ancient relics and on his good relations with the men who find them. <laughs> the mammoth entrepreneur has struck another deal. The hunters are pleased with the sale. Their livelihood depends on the chance discovery of an animal that died out thousands of years ago. Работы такой не то вообще идеально, чтобы получать жить вообще идеально, чтобы ты пришел, например, получил зарплату и не думал, что где тебе там еще копытить там, ну добывать. Вот этими живут этими бивнями. Им есть эта выгода. Все ищут, все, все семьи ищут здесь бивень. The city of Yakutsk is the next stop in the comeback journey of the woolly mammoth. This is the capital of the autonomous state of Yakutia, one of Russia's richest regions, a frontier town buzzing with wealth from diamond and gold mining. Now this city is on the verge of another rush, one driven by the extinction of a species 10,000 years ago. Yakutsk is the centre of the mammoth ivory trade and its gateway to the rest of the world. In a small studio in the city centre, ivory artist Konstantin Mamontov is at work. His name literally means mammoth. Konstantin Mamontov has carved ivory souvenirs for nearly 40 years. His pieces are sold in local shops and exported to Japan and China. They even decorate Scottish bagpipes. Lately, his work has taken on a new importance. A worldwide ban on elephant ivory has created new demand for the tusks of their prehistoric cousins. In the last few years, the value of mammoth ivory has doubled to more than $100 a kilo. Бивня мамонта изготовлять оригинальные работы, тогда у нас еще больше принесет денег, валюты. Ну, наша республика, наша Россия разбогатеет. The souvenir market is part of a grand plan to make mammoth ivory the signature business of Yakutia. To control and encourage the trade, only licensed companies can buy and sell. 
Indigenous people too are allowed to cash in on any mammoth remains they might stumble across. Gennady Alexeyev is the local government's point man on Yakutia's new commodity. There are other players in this prehistoric treasure hunt and they're being left out in the cold. Winter. Winter in the middle of summer. <laughs> Dr. Mark Schatz's office is a freezing underground laboratory. This is famous mama's baby. He have two ages, six months son yes. and uh, 39,000 years. 39,000 years. Yeah. And he's been in... This is a copy of one of the most complete mammoths ever found. The real one is under scientific study in St. Petersburg. So how deep are we here? 12 meters. From his icebox laboratory, Dr. Schatz studies the permafrost, a layer of frozen soil that runs as thick as 1,500 metres beneath much of Siberia. This natural deep freeze has preserved the remains of millions of mammoths. Vegetation 10,000 years old hangs out of an icy wall. Above ground, the city's inhabitants are captive to the permafrost too. Every house here is built on poles. If they were closer to the ground, they'd melt the frozen soil and foundations would crumble. With global warming, temperatures might be on the rise, but Dr. Schatz is sure it won't make any difference to Siberia's underground freeze. Мерзлота меняет свое положение не в зависимости от деятельности человека, как считает человек. Это булавочки на теле слона, эти воздействия. Это климат. Это геологические процессы, которые происходят. Но идут они очень медленно. В природе нет революции. Mammoths are valuable not for what they can be sold for, but for what their ancient remains reveal about the past. At the nearby Mammoth Museum, the display is impressive, but researchers like Albert Protopopov are worried that science has been trampled in the rush for mammoth ivory. Потому что вот они наслаиваются как древесные кольца, и именно в зависимости от климатических, от этого зависит растительность. Вот они вот изменялась их толщина, их химический состав этих всех костных наслоений. He's somewhat comforted by a new regulation forcing companies to hand over a sample of every tusk they find for scientific analysis. But the scientists are losing out in the race to unearth mammoth remains. They just don't have enough money to compete. Десятки вертолетных часов. Один вертолетный час – это сколько? Больше тысячи евро. То есть все очень долго. A mammoth find is the stuff dreams are made of for the people of Chokodach. 
<laughs> Nikolai, like many men in the town, struggles to find work. But hidden in his garage is a bizarre secret. Nikolai hopes he's hit the jackpot with this treasure. It's a skull. Nikolai says he's not the only local hiding prehistoric remains in his back shed. But by keeping the mammoth skull, he's defying a centuries-old superstition of his indigenous community. Legend has it that those who find the prehistoric animals are cursed. So far, Nikolai hasn't seen any evidence of that, but he's still waiting for a buyer. Trader Georgi Gavriliev, himself an indigenous person, is keeping an open mind about the legend. But it hasn't dampened his ambition to make a profit from the ancient animals. На самом деле, если так подумать, то нехорошо, как бы, то, что умерло, его доставать. Лично у меня такое тоже мнение, что, может быть, есть какой-то там, есть теневая сторона. Потому что были какие-то факты, что люди находили бивень, ну, там тоже у них были какие-то проблемы, связанные, может быть, с этим, может быть, не с этим. Superstition aside, there's a booming business in scouring for the remains of a beast that once dominated this landscape. Long after its extinction, the woolly mammoth continues to bring fortune and success. Thousands of years on, this prehistoric prey is as real as ever to modern hunters. <laughs>